This is something that was a fantasy for me. I used to fantasize in the 90s, like, what would it be like to get up whatever time you want? And what would it be like to just do what you, brings you joy? Now I know, like, this is my life. There are, you know, challenges as well, but it, it's been mostly, you know, every day is full of synchronicities, miracles, guiding me here and there. I share a lot on social media because my brand is liveadivinelife.com is that I live a divine life just because I just do what I feel inspired to do and I have so many exciting things. Welcome to the Consciousness of the Way. I'm your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master San Quinn, and we have an incredible guest here today. I can't tell you how excited I've been waiting to uh, bring her onto the podcast and we finally have this moment. Uh, I'd like everyone to in, be uh, experience the angelic frequency and the divine presence of Angel Shishi. Thank Welcome, you. Thank you friend. so much for having me, San Quinn. It's a joy to be here. Oh, it's 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 really my joy, and I'm really grateful. I, I can't believe we finally got to uh, synchronize this, and and you're here on the podcast. I was just. Um, so gravitate i gravitate so much to your your incredible skill your mastery that i can observe just from where i am in my own journey and i really wanted to share that with with all the listeners and you know really get into uh, a, an understanding of the profound uh, gifts that are out there and your story is really profound in of itself and i would love you to share it with the listeners on the channel here my whole story from childhood growing up, that's going to take a long well, time. However, however you choose that's to. Um, Let's yeah. start the story with my spiritual awakening, because that's when life really yeah. started. Yeah. Well, I have to give a teeny bit of background to know what's the difference between spiritually awake and, and being a little on automatic pilot, a little drone working for the man. Uh, so I was the oldest of seven kids um, in a very super, super Catholic family. Like we prayed the road. My dad's from Ireland. We prayed the rosary on our knees, like as children, the entire month of October for the month of Mary. And I, I actually really was into Catholicism and very religious. I actually wanted to be a nun. Um, at one point, I changed my mind on that. Thank God. <laughs> I just thank God for small miracles. But uh, I, I was in this paradigm of it's like uh, you can't really make a living following your dreams. You really have to put your nose to the grindstone and just accept the world is the way it is. And you just have to work hard. And, you know, there's that country song, work your fingers to the bone. What do you get? Bone of fingers. That was like my paradigm that I was raised in. <laughs> that right. is just about, you got to just suck it up. Life kind of sucks and you just have to work really hard. So in college I was, uh, I wanted to do music and be a professional singer. And my parents were like, well, that's something you can do as a hobby or you could do it on the side, but it's not practical to major in that. So I ended up majoring in communications, which has actually been helpful. And I I'm, lived in Italy my sophomore year of college. So I minored in art history and, uh, and Italian, with double minor. I never really used either of those things that much in, professional, in my professional life. But what do you do with a communications major? Either you're in journalism, which I wasn't really wanting to do that, <laughs> or typically sales is kind of where you end up going. So in, uh, after I graduated college, I had about 10 years in corporate life uh, in downtown Chicago. And I was, <laughs> I married at 23 um, to, I really was like scared of just how to survive in the world. And I just asked God, please send me someone nice that will take me nice places and take care of me. That was like my big prayer. So I met this guy and he was in the restaurant business and um, he was a total workaholic, like 60, 80 hours a week. I was a workaholic also working 60, 70 hours a week. My last job was director of business development for an internet company called e-commerce exchange. And I worked right next to the board of trade in downtown Chicago and the big, I would walk to work. I lived in presidential towers, which is on the 39th floor, this high rise with the pool, really cool. I lived in some of the best places over those 10 years and we ate out a lot at the best restaurants and, you know. But um, one, I, I was not happy because I was, I was working a lot and um, it was very stressful. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, 7.30 a.m. meetings, high heels and suits and just like <laughs> running around. And, and the only downtime, this, you know, being Irish, drinking like is huge in Chicago. There's a huge Irish American population. So 
happy hours after work, you know, with the boys. I, I was the first senior uh, female account executive for this company before that other job. And I worked so hard to like sell 400,000 myself. And I had to hire an assistant out of my pocket. I was working literally 70, 80 hours a week at that time. So that's like insane, right? Your whole life. And I was asking, you know, being raised with my Catholic upbringing, like Jesus said, uh, he came so that we could have life and have it abundantly. And I was like, well, this isn't life. Even if we have money and live in a nice place, like there's no time to do anything fun. And I don't, you know, is it that fun to get be a weekend warrior and get trashed every weekend and then go drag yourself to work and go through the whole thing? Anyway, it's so meaningless, but I was just, I didn't know how to get off of that. And I was also, even on my free time, I was like a busybody, very busy, busy, busy running here. I was volunteering for other things and it was like really insane lifestyle. And um, out of the blue, my sister passed away. Well, we had about a one week notice. So like we heard she's sick, she's in the hospital. I, I was in Chicago, my whole family's in the, Chicago suburbs area or Chicago. And they told us your, your sister's very sick and she probably, you know, she, you need to come to San Diego now. She could pass away any day. And our, so our whole family flew there and we're by her bedside. And within a week she had passed away and all her major organs failed and they couldn't figure out what caused it at all. So she was only 20 and I'm the list of seven. So I was the first daughter and then two other sisters in the middle. And then the fourth sister is the one who passed. She was vibrantly healthy, like an athlete, just, it was so shocking. It completely shocked me to beyond, broke my heart. And I went through this six month period of, you know, a six month um, darkness time where I was just uh, really questioning everything. Like I actually, at, the, at that time I was 28 and I really thought maybe the Catholic things could be true. And like, if you have sex before marriage, you could, you know, and you die without going to confession, you have a mortal sin on your soul and you're going directly to hell. And I was just like, what if she went to hell? I know she had a boyfriend. You know, I, I was like, I can't even believe that was me, but I was 16 years of indoctrination. I chose a St. Mary's of Notre Dame, all women's college Catholic. <laughs> I just laugh now because it's such a past life for me. But this wake yeah. up call really caused me to just go, what the hell is life for? You can die that quickly. Like, what am I even doing? This is not my husband. This is not my job. These are not my friends. Like, this isn't my life. Wow. It was such a massive wake up call. And wow. I literally stopped everything I was doing, like canceled cable, cable TV. I stopped opening mail. I stopped. That's the last time, 97, when I watched the news, literally. I see a little on uh, no. Instagram and Facebook, but I don't watch the news. It's just not a part of my reality. Not 97, was it? 97? Yeah. Not, wow. 90, 1997, yeah. So news wow. to me, I'm just like, it doesn't affect me. I, I create my own heaven on earth nowadays, thank goodness I had. And it, it is a gift that my sister gave me that dark night of the soul and that crisis that caused me to be able to ask the questions, who am I? Why am I here? What's the purpose of my life? And otherwise I could very well just be married doing the same old, same old, like, it's it is an automatic pilot situation you're just trained right to do this is what you do you work with you all that stuff so um after she passed um i uh got really quiet for the first time ever and thank god someone gave me my first metaphysical book literally my first wow. which was a near-death experience story and I bawled my eyes out reading this book every page. It was called Embraced by the Light. And the woman in it was Catholic. She's She was pronounced dead for 20 minutes. And have you heard of that book? Or no, heard no, of no, 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 no. I'm just feeling the pain that you're feeling right now. And it's. I uh, know. I felt the first thing. I'm like, in, don't cry because it's so cute. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is real. It Ladies was, and gentlemen, it was very anyone intense, watching yeah. this. Anyone watching yeah. this right now, I mean, that that is... That, Losing that a loved one, that. especially a sibling, and we were very close. And yeah, it was shocking enough to say, what is death, you know, and, and really what happens when you go to the other side? And I was taught all this bullshit, frankly, fear-based teachings. You know, there might have been some good things. Jesus said, love one another and peace be with you. But the rest, <laughs> a lot of it is made up. Don't get me started on that. But... Um, I was brainwashed pretty much, drank the Kool-Aid. So it took a minute, but reading this book, it was so hopeful to me because when she went to the other side, Jesus greeted her and apparently anyone that you believe is God to you or greets you, if it's Moses, Muhammad, anyone, Buddha, 
your best friend hugs how's it going love you great job let's go over everything and then you have this life review and in a split second you experience every single thing in your whole life in the blink of an eye and you not only feel it from your own perspective but you feel it from the perspective of the other person as though you're them so it can be happy things like if you smiled at someone and you made their day and then the ripple effect you see everything it can be you know anytime you slighted someone and hurt them deeply and you know so but the main thing that struck me was just the incredible un vibrational frequency of unconditional love that was everywhere. There was not judgment. It was sitting with your guides going like the only questions they ask are like, how did that relate to love? Do you see how that didn't relate to love? Like, so if you already know the end game, which is everything is what would love do now or what, how do you live in the highest loving way? And that's not always just coddling and la la la, I love you. Sometimes it's equally challenge and support. It's not just love, 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 but in the sweetest way. But, um, and it's also to share the gifts that you were given at the highest level. And so when I read that book, it blew my mind and it, uh, it gave me so much hope. Like, thank God this Catholic shit is not true. How could God send someone to eternal hell to burn in flames <laughs> because they have sex before marriage because they have the hormones that God put there in the first place. Like it really, all, I started to realize how inane these teachings were really. And no offense to any Catholics listening, but it's no longer <laughs> resonating with me. Probably that's not your main audience, though. <laughs> Something tells me. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so the Catholicism was a deep wound, and I had a lot of guilt and shame growing up because everything is bad. Masturbation, sexual dog set, you know, anything. And, of course, yeah. that's you just constantly sit, see, feeling guilty for being alive. That's, like, the, the way. But... Thank God I was liberated out of that. And that started my spiritual awakening of asking, pretty much have, starting to see 1111 everywhere, recur recurring numbers. And I, and I Googled, what is 1111? And I found this website um, by Solara. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she talked about 1111 is the awakening code. When you start to see that, that means you're, you're, you're being awakened to get on your life path and get on your purpose. And, and I was just like, whoa, this is a real thing. I was wondering why I was seeing 1111 everywhere. And I started getting, you know, I got another gift of a book from another friend. It's funny how these books really helped me. One was called Conversations with God. You might have heard of that or read it. No, no. Such a beautiful, incredible book. And the main thing that liberated me from that was that it was about Neil Donald Walsh, and he was a radio announcer, but he's, he bro broke his back and somehow became homeless. And one day he just said, God, what is the purpose of life? Why is this happening? Swear words, swear words, blah, blah, blah. And then God answers back, and he did it's this whole book about a conversation with God. And so the most beautiful part of the message was, you know, God says, all I want for you, Neil, is to have the grandest vision or, uh, that you could of what life, what you would like to do and be that what is the highest thought the highest version the highest vision that you can muster and just become it and it's something that you will love you know it's not like i, I thought oh i have to be like mother Teresa. i always wanted to be a saint and i was like but i don't then you have to wear like burlap sacks and you can't wear makeup and you have to work with lepers like i didn't want to do that and i'm like i want to be a saint but not that kind of saint <laughs> but i was so relieved that you don't mm -hmm have to be this martyr to to prove that you're good i was you know and that book really gave me a lot of freedom and the the main message of that book is you just decide and declare who you are and become it so i was like this it just felt all of a sudden instead of all this constriction and like guilt and shame it was just like ugh, expansion freedom i finally could breathe i was like oh it's safe to be me i love music you know and i always wanted to be a singer songwriter and i didn't know how I, I was, you know, I did a lot of Irish music. I did jazz music, but I didn't know how to write songs. And so I started saying, I'm a songwriter. Um, I started saying, I'm the goddess of love and music. A little bit further on my journey, because I didn't just start out saying I'm a goddess. That's pretty blasphemous in the Catholic faith. But at some point I got to that point of, I'm the goddess of love and music. My music touches, moves, and inspires millions of people around the world and reminds them of their own divinity. And... Um, opens hearts and heals people. And so I started to write songs um, and I had this whole album come to me. So this is over the course of a couple of years. I got separated from my husband and his fabulous, uh, that the last place we lived was Eugenie Terrace, which had a pool on the roof. It's in Lincoln Park, a really beautiful place. And I ended up moving into an artist loft in, loft in Old Town, which is kind of a 
funky area in Chicago. It was like up three flights of stairs. It had a purple door. It was really cool, but it was, you know, not elegant. There was no elevator, which is great for my workouts and getting back in shape after being super, you know, not working out and stuff. So that was so beautiful to start meditating. Actually, oh, I forgot one thing that was so instrumental. I met this producer of music, a composer named Harold Grandstaff Moses. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. I met him at a dinner party and he gave, I bought his CD. It was called The Drone and it was 53 minutes of the Song of the Spheres, which basically it sounded like this, but a lot more complex, right? Like an ohm. And it was like the breath of God is what <clears throat> it said in, in parentheses, the breath of God. I listened to only that and one other one that was a harp music called Chakra Clearing it was a harp called Wheels of Light. Those two albums, that's all I played in my artist loft. My neighbors thought I was insane. It sounded like there was a UFO in their apartment. But that <laughs> frequency, whatever, you know, the frequency, I stopped pop music, nothing, no radio. It's just like in the zone of just connection. And I started to see the purple light in, the, in my mm. third eye. And I started to have kind of this these miraculous experiences and i started channeling songs and i channeled the whole album so crazily easily and i had i just literally started my whole life was following a thread of synchronicities i for and the celestine prophecy is a book about synchronicities that got me aware that that can happen have you read that by james redfield no so those are probably the three most important ones that started so he he just followed synchronicities and it was in tibet china you might like it because it was, it was about China and the Himalayas and his adventures with following where it's like someone comes up to you and go, would you like to go to Hawaii? You're like, sure. You know, and you just start following where you're guided and where the doors are opening. You don't bang on the doors yeah. that are shut. And yeah, I didn't yeah. know life could be that fun. I thought you had to just do what you're supposed to do, you know, but now I find out there's this whole other reality, a whole other dimension of just a life of following your bliss. And so I started attracting musicians. So before I recorded my album, I went to an open mic at the Old Town School of Folk Music. I sang the first song I wrote and it wasn't even finished. I made up an ending. I guess the song name was Waking Up. That was my first song. And in the audience, there's a producer and he said, do you have any more songs like that? I'd love to record it. And I said, no, that's my first song. And so he said, let's do it. So we put that down and then it was within one year um, I had a whole album of 10 beautiful songs. It's on Spotify now. And even though my, I, I go by Angel Shishi. Yeah. You'll have to check it out. Yeah. It's no, beautiful. I want to check it out. Absolutely. 100%. So my first CD release party was on 11 11 2000. And so, and then my second CD release party was 11 11 2007. So 11 11 has already been like my favorite holiday. In LA, I have a lot of events. Uh, I'll tell the story of how I, briefly how I moved to LA. I don't want this to be a monologue, you, so should I let no. you talk a little bit? Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm almost the same. Like people listen, and it's like we have so much to share. It's, it's all about sharing, and it's, it's not a monologue. It's like I want to. The listeners want to hear about your experience because this is sort of like a, a validation, a realization for anybody that we all have the ability to tune into this stuff and how you realize it is up to you, how you activate. It's like the beautiful part of how you were like, I'm in this mindset. I was given religion as the only access point to my spirituality. And then all of a sudden you realize that that's not even, it's not even on the menu. I don't even have to even <laughs> think about it. And then you all of a sudden open the floodgates to true high ascension, true high consciousness, where you're now getting complete access to what people could only fantasize about in relation to direct source information. And this is part of, you know, everybody has the ability to do this. It's where are you coming from? How are you getting your messaging? And what I, I want to say more than anything is how you feel it. So you, yeah. everything that you did was a, oh, this feels good. This doesn't feel good. Yes. It always comes back to that feeling. Yeah, I call it my inner GPS. Like it's it's telling you 24-7, is it in alignment or not? You either feel good or you don't. You feel constricted or expanded. That's it. It is so much simpler, really. But you have to have the faith. And so that's why I love to tell the story, to tell people you can totally take a leap of faith and you're 100% yeah. supported every time especially if you're following your bliss or following what's in alignment or following synchronicities. 
And I call it miracles every moment. When you're in that frequency, it is a life of miracles every moment. When your heart is open and every person you meet is your new brother, sister, new beloved, new best friend, you meet a lot of different people than someone who's like, oh, damn it, I'm running errands, you know. And I still do go unconscious at times. I'm not always like, nah, I'm not Pollyanna. <laughs> Welcome to Gladtown. There's nothing wrong in my world. No, but I do my best to stay in my heart as much as possible. And I know that's the beautiful, you know, loving frequency where miracles can happen. And I have had so many miracles. So I'll tell how I ended up in LA, which is such a cool story. So I have this new CD called Waking Up, and I handed it to a friend of mine, and she gave it to her friend who happened to be in Denver. And one day I get a message on my phone, is this the illustrious Sheila O'Donnell? My name on Spotify, by the way, is Sheila O'Donnell. That's my real actual name, even though Angel Shishi is what I go by. And I've been listening to it nonstop on repeat. It's some of the most high vibrational music I've ever heard, and I'd love to book you at some body, mind, spirit events that I'm producing. So he booked me for one in Asheville, North Carolina, and one in Denver. And I was like, no way, you can I can actually just start performing and making money doing this and travel around the country. And yeah, it was literally like, yes, it's really happening. Like I could just kept following synchronicities. So we became friends just on the phone. And then at one one day he just said, I'm I'm going to swim with the dolphins soon. And I just interrupted. I said, Dolphins, I've always wanted to swim with the dolphins. <laughs> and he's like, Well, you can come. He goes, You can come too. Just say the word. And I was like, Word. <laughs> and he said, um, well, he put me on a three-way call with this travel agent, and he literally was just booking this trip. It was a five thousand dollar trip to the Waikilo Hilton. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me that, that I said, I can't pay you back. Like, I don't have that kind of money. And he's like, this is 100 percent a gift. I feel really guided to offer this to you. If you want to pay it forward at some point in your life when someone needs something, feel free. But this is no strings attached. And I was kind of like, is he thinking I'm going to, you know, that it was a romantic strings attached situation? Yeah, but right. it was just so. <laughs> He didn't tell me much about it other than it's just a retreat swimming with the dolphins. So I arrive in Hawaii just with a lot of faith because a lot of people are like, you don't even know this person. You're crazy. I just followed the hell yes in my body, which was all right. I'm doing it. So um, oh, I forgot there's one there's part. There's a part I want to tell you right before that, that I kind of forgot. That's a key part, which is my experience with Archangel Michael. So I was I was still keeping my job at this point and I was not working very much. Unfortunately, I was just. <laughs> reading metaphysical articles all day. I remember my boss, I printed out how to say I love you in a hundred languages. And he held it up for the whole office. Like, whose is this? And I was like, oh, that's mine. Nothing. Tra -la -la. I was just like obsessed with the metaphysical things, you know? Uh, <laughs> so I uh, ran across an article that said, do you want to be an emissary of light? And that just was emblazoned with these, th this title. And I just went, and it said, this is channeled by Rana Herman and it's Archangel Michael. And I'm like, Archangel Michael, I know him. You know, he's in the Catholic Church, too. He's yeah. the badass angel that kills the serpent that's in the near background there. Right there. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon, uh, which yep. I know. It's, it's a little different than that. So anyways, I, yeah. I was like, all right, if this is real, I'm just going to write him a letter just to see. But I tongue in cheek wrote Archangel Michael a letter. Dear Archangel Michael. If you're for real, like I'm for real, this is the job I want. I want to be an emissary of light. I would like to be an earth, everyday earth angel for my job. I don't want these stupid matrixy jobs. So like, I want to be free. I want to do what I love. And I want to help others to live free, inspired lives, you know? So kind of like if you're for real, give me a sign. So that was April, 2001. And then the trip, the free trip to Hawaii was July, 2001. So I said, you know, give me a sign if it's for real. The very first day I arrived was it was a Dorian Virtue retreat, which I had not heard of her. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's a famous oh. angel lady. And the first day she was channeling Archangel Michael. And I was like, whoa, this is the first day of my everyday Earth Angel training. It was so clear to me, yeah, uh, that this was my path. And so I had the most mystical week of my life. We did, there, you know, we pet and got to be, you know, in pictures kissing the dolphins in the pool. But we also went swimming with wild dolphins, which a pod of 200 dolphins were circling us for 45 minutes. I felt like I was just, I, my frequency was never, you know, forever changed from that experience. And I came home like miracles are real. Oh my God, this is amazing. And I met a guy on this uh, trip in Hawaii who lived in Santa Monica and his name is Charles. And I, 
he said he was going to Europe for three months in the fall. And he said, well, why don't you sublet my place? You know, you can have a new experience. LA is probably would just love to have you. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a musician. I would love to share my music there. And so I just packed up my Ford Escort with a car top carrier and drove out Route 66 the whole way, drove to LA and landed in Santa Monica in his place for three months. And I just literally, I threw away all my monkey suits and high heels and all, I only had just the things I loved in my car. That's it. No attachment to anything. I was like, oh, and by the way, my husband and I amicably got divorced. Like, thank you. I'm sorry. We were pretending we were building a future together. We now realize we're not, you know. You can have everything. See, ya. it's been great. Like no issues. We held hands. We didn't have a lawyer. We amicably just let go. And I said, I want freedom more than anything. It's more important to me. And he was cool. He, he was understanding it. And we're still, you know, we didn't have any bad feelings on it. And I was like, I wanted to be free and liberated. That was my number one thing that I want to create. So, um, I drive to, uh, so I'm basically go from a regular grown up job to on Venice Beach, um, doing angel what reading. Year what, what? what year was that? What year was that? That was two th October 2001. It was a month after 9-11, which is a crazy right, time uh, to be doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was such a shut fear mode. Um, and I forgot one little part. Doreen Virtue gave me a scholarship to her, after hearing my story, uh, to her angel therapy practitioner training program, <laughs> which is like a $1,200 scholarship. And that's where I found out I was psychic because before that psychic was the absolute devil in my upbringing. Like you don't say the word psychic, it's divination, it's evil. You'll go straight to hell. Don't touch any of the cards. Don't touch any of that stuff. It's got the devil sprinkled all over it. So I had, and then we learned mediumship and I'm like, I'm not talking to dead people. I don't want to do that. I was scared and I found out I can easily do it. I can easily um, channel. And she told, she gave 15 minute readings to each, all the people on the, on the, um, retreat and said, you are clear audience, you, you are clear cognizant, which is clear knowing. And those are my strongest gifts to this day, even though I have some clairvoyance and clairsentience is strong as well. But the clear cognizance, which is you just download, like I can do readings and someone sits before me and I, I can see so much about their lives, so, you know, their ancestors, yes. their traumas, they're going to just flows it. through like very easily. It's such a beautiful gift to be able to share and bring hope to people and help them not have to go to therapy for five years, but just help them identify that root trauma that's affecting their whole life, that's hidden from their view. It's like a miracle. That's why it's called angel therapy. It's not like the old fashioned talk therapy, like, huh, tell me how that make you feel, blah, blah. Jesus, let's get to the, let's get to the root thing and empower you. You're, you are divine, let's get on with it, right? And right, so it was so right. fun. I feel like part of my work is to help liberate people too from the, you know, this box or constraints that they're living under fear, fear-based life and help them identify that. So it was so fun. I just made a little sign, you know, angel readings by Shishi. And I was just on Venice beach, you know, um, doing that. I played, I brought my guitar. Oh, I cut holes in all of my t-shirts and I found this store called mother plucker feather company and I bought wings and I put, you know, tied them underneath. So it looked like, like they were coming out Are of my you bag. You would have looked adorable in that, I'm sure. Uh, aw, thank you. I, I went through at least 20 pairs. They were very battered by the end. I just pretty much <laughs> did, for the first like five or six years, I was just, you know, angel shishi with the wings everywhere I went. It was just really, <laughs> but who would have thought I'd go from this hippie lifestyle to just hanging out on Venice Beach, you know, and then I followed synchronicities. And there were times when I fell into fear. I'm like, shit, I only have $60. Well, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a miracle would always happen. Yeah. And I, I wasn't, I guess it wasn't my path to become the millionaire that lives, you know, is isolated with every, all their needs met because I wouldn't have met the most miraculous people. The tribe I have attracted in LA of artists, you know, people who are very brave do come to LA. It's very challenging, but people who are trying to follow their dreams. So artists, yeah. singers, musicians, just leaders, um, some people say, oh, L.A., they're, they're so uh, shallow there and everyone has plastic surgery. And there is a part of that world here that I really don't run across that much every once in a while. But the people I know are just beautiful. I feel like that's some of my greatest riches are the beautiful friendships and um, creating. Right now I do I have an event company called, called L.A. Conscious Events. So I love to create events quarterly that are big. And then I have a lot of little events like Angel Circle and but I live, I never know where my rent is coming from. I, I'm living in the Hollywood Hills in a beautiful home, uh, a two bedroom little cottage. And I've just been renting uh, here for about 
14 or almost 15 years in December. It'll be 15 years. Wow. Before that, I did a lot of moving around as an mm -hmm. as a like scattered earth angel, but I started building my practice and became a little more stable and was able to, you know, but I've loved being in one place for in a place I love. Literally, my street is the street with the Hollywood sign. People stop, not I'm on a side street off of that, but like people stop just like two blocks away to take pictures of the sign. And it feels very expanded and beautiful in this area. There's a lot of producers, creators, you know, people in entertainment and wonderful people here and music jam parties and all kinds of cool events. So I live this blissful life um, that I never could have dreamed of. And I'm 55 now. So like I, I'm getting you look older. You look amazing, by the way. Thank you so much. I feel like if I, I have pictures of me when I was 28, 29, working in these jobs, and I probably looked older in some ways. Um, I mean, obviously, my face is a little older, but I'm so much more happy that I feel uh, vibrantly alive, truly. And that's such yeah. a gift to be able to feel free and happy and to just ask literally, where do I go? What do I do? What do I say and to whom? And that's like your lifestyle. That's a lot of right. people would love to have that lifestyle. And I can promise it's absolutely possible you see this is just an incredible like um testament to how you follow your heart and yeah. what is realized when you truly allow that truth teller i call it to to materialize your reality instead of yeah. using this which is so limited because it's not even anything as a projector every everything in the information is coming from here and so yeah. people tend to go oh well you know I was thinking with my head, well, that's a mistake. First thing, you want <laughs> yeah. to do, first thing you want to do is start from here. And your story is just like, it's almost like you're in Hollywood. You sure you haven't attempted to script write something there? Because, I mean, it literally is a Hollywood, it's a Hollywood <laughs> movie in reality, truly. I mean, hmm. you know, you could literally put a script together on that thing. And if you don't want to get a script writer, go to chat, chat GBT. You'll have it in five minutes. Right. Um, yeah, that's a great it, idea. I, know, I wasn't because, into screenwriting personally, but that is, isn't a bad idea. Well, it is. Be, well, yeah. I mean, I think what's really important, too, for the audience is I want to get a little bit more into, okay, so when you experienced the – you were validated by by this school that you started going to, and it's all part of, like, an experiential, like, journey for anybody and how that they acquire these skills. You know, for me – um, you know, starting on the path of a priest 30 years ago, it was just that there were systems that were given to you. And in most cases, you know, most Taoists don't go to the depth that I do in relation to channeling. I just straight up get direct source information all the time. That's what I do. I'm going to do a transmission um, probably in the next week or so for all the followers on Instagram. And maybe you might be interested. I'm just going to bring Latsu, yeah. which is one of my teachers. He's just going to come in and blast the roof off. And just give people a nice big juice, juice big big hug of love, and that, that's all There's just no energy. Into hugs of love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean it really is energy. And yeah. uh, what I find is interesting is you. I want to know more about how when you started validating your 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 skills. For me, when I started mm -hmm. channeling, my particular teacher had probably about 50, 70 years worth of channeling experience physically, and I did it once. And I was realized. And that has a lot to do with my past lives and, you know, being specific energies and other past lives as priests and whatnot. But I realized it in one shot. And so it, it literally felt to me, I, I exploded. There was such a burst of energy that came inside my, my physical body. And it was, it was transmuted out into just basically, I looked like I was in the sauna for five days. And wow. the information was just coming out like full force. That was when Latsu first came to me and was like, here you go. This is realized right here, right now. And then the direct source information is you and I are uh, very much alike in that sense. I mean, we could sit here with our eyes open, not having to get in a lotus position and be very quick to transmit uh, direct source information because it's just part of becoming familiar with your your setting and how you're receiving the information, creating your own communication with your guides and how the information comes out. Some people may get it in symbols, words, numbers, uh, images, and then sometimes you refine that stuff depending upon how you perceive your reality is how you can dictate how you create those things. And I, I've sort of refined my skills 
the clear audio, clear vision, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty, it's it's developed pretty consistently, and that's using a lot of Taoist tools to refine that. But sometimes people will gravitate. You gravitate to what you love. It's like people look at me and they go, "Wow, well, you're 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 a." Taoist priest, so you must be a martial arts guy. I'm not interested in that stuff. I teach people martial arts, but I have zero interest in putting my hands on anybody or being the big master, grandmaster, materializer. The only thing that excites me is manifesting and, and, and healing firsthand. When I see physical transformations before my very eyes, that's 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 my bag that's my excitement that's what i enjoy watching a physical transformation an instant healing as it should be as you and i know and i'm not going to speak for you i want to hear what you have to say but like it's instantaneous i when yeah. when people see one of my my uh shorts and they're like he said ma ma manifestation is instant magic is instant one thousand percent and so when people are like oh well i i said lamborghini it didn't happen that's because you didn't believe it well, have you ever materialized a Lamborghini instantaneously? No, I haven't. But do I believe it's possible? Absolutely. I've just never been motivated to care about materializing a, a, a Lamborghini. You know, it's like telekinesis. You know, I can take objects and bend them like butter and all that kind of good stuff. But I've never been gravitated to the idea of, you know, admitting fire to burn objects with my hands. It doesn't excite me. It's like that's like the last thing on my mind of, whoa. That's so great that I can harness that energy. And I mean, look, this is my personality, just in case anyone's confused. It's not my higher divine self. It's my personality. But we <laughs> all should have them because it's part of the human being experience. So I want to know what was it like for you when you realized this instant shift into how, how finely tuned your skills were? What was it like? Yeah, it's funny because it's like I thought I, the whole time I mean, at the beginning, especially, but even now, sometimes I'm like, I'm making this up. Where in the hell is this coming from? And then people will confirm it and say that makes sense, you know, and I had to after a million times of trusting, like <laughs> I, remember I, I met this woman. She said, I can't have children. I said, oh, you're going to have a daughter. And seven years later, I ran into her. And she had a daughter with her. And she's like, you told me, I, you know, I know she didn't stay in touch, but she goes, you told me I was going to. And here she is. And I'm like, wow, I did. When I'm in a reading state, I am, you know, it's not a trance channel. I'm just myself talking, but it's my higher self connecting to their higher self and um, their guides. And my intention is pure. I always set a container and ask only, only allow for the highest frequencies of living light, divine love and immaculate grace to be with us. And I ask that I be a pure channel and only say the words that will help this person to live the highest version of their lives. And my intention love is it. pure. And because of that, it does flow. And, cool. you know, uh, it's flowing right now. Thank you for that little aww. pick me up. <laughs> you know, it, well, well, it's really interesting because I, I materialize it in a very dense, young sort of tangible energy. And most most people that I come across that are, are just, you know, like yourself, Michael Jordan of of intuition and, and channeling. You have to understand it's like people need to realize their experience is, is individual to themselves. And so yeah. that that materialization and that feeling, it has to be validated by you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, she, she and I can't be explaining this and going, this is ours and this is how it's going to be for you. It can be individual for that transformation of that individual. Know that it will happen. Know that it is true, but realize that it will be different. Like your yin and, and earth energy is so strong that it's it's almost like, you don't even it's so high frequency that you're not even feeling it it's just like straight up just it's just like life yeah and but I, I, mean, do I, feel, I do feel when i go flip into the third dimension it's like it's like being in fifth gear and going to first it's like and i feel bad and I, you know i forget who i am i start being insecure and i'm like what well, get me out of here no this isn't the truth i'm divine <laughs> you know but i feel it i i go back and forth and the, you know people cut me off i want to swear out the window and stuff, but yeah. I have, uh, I can, st I know the hacks. You put your hand on your heart, you breathe deeply, exhale deeply, and you get back into your center. It's easy to, you know, get into fear, but that's the thing. If you're not in those, in that faith love, it is easy to fall back in because there's so much media pumping out fear and every bill and every billboard, making every woman insecure. You have to look like this or you're not acceptable. So many beautiful women, friends just feel insecure. And I'm like, 
seriously, <laughs> you're gorgeous. Just own it. You know, I, it's, it's all a belief system. And so I, you know, people are really hijacked with this, not good enough, you know, need to prove themselves and prove their worth. And I think since most of the people, I mean, every human wants to be loved and respected. And we have a whole world full of people that are trying to get love and respecting def desperately outside themselves. But if you already feel love and send your inner child, like here's a, like one, if someone, someone only has one minute to start their day and you're not a good meditator yet, or all you have to do is think of a puppy or a kitten or whatever your favorite animal is, your heart just can go from grumpy and worried about life to, oh my God, it's so freaking cute. And that same love that you would feel and imagine how much the creator of all life uh, loves us since we're creations. If we as a little human, supposed human, can have that much love in one second for a little puppy or a kitten. Does that kitten have to do anything to earn your love or just uh, or make you love it? No, they're just being a kitten, right? And I, I tra tell, tell people, you don't have to justify your worth. And if you're in, so, so you, let's say you think of a kitten, you send that same love that you'd, you'd feel toward any little kitten. If you're a kid, I mean, not everyone's a kitten lover. I know that, but on your own inner child. So send it to little Shishi. I love you. Shishi kisses, hugs. And then you feel so filled up and then you're, you're a lighthouse of love versus a drain that an unconscious drain that you're trying so hard to be loved from outside you. And so when people know that it's such a freeing thing, you don't have to impress people. You don't have to prove anything. You can be as human as you want. And even though I'm an angel, I have a lot of, you know, failings. And I was talking with San Quinn before we started about, you know, some of the struggles I have physically, I just start going to the gym again. That's one thing I'm very in the high chakras and I have not taken the physical body. I paid as much attention as I need to. And I'm starting a new regimen, which we started to talk about. He's uh, because I know you're an expert and, and have done a lot of things, but I just started weight training and I was telling him I went to the gym and there's like 95% guys with all this testosterone. Ooh, one guy next to me, his name is Ricky. He has a boxing thing, a two time world champ boxing. And he was like, just keep coming. He was so sweet, but I just, I love not having to be, you know, I'm very uh, pleasantly plump and out of shape. And I love just being okay with that. And like, that's exactly no, what I'm starting. Just in case, your, your your perception of how you look is almost as good as how you really look. How I see you, you're just you're just beautiful, beautiful oh, light, you. beautiful energy, and and the the visual component is just you playing around with your personality for a little bit longer. But moreover, I mean, understanding that you know, okay, we want to we want to take this vehicle through this journey as long as possible so that you can continue doing what you do. And I can I can acknowledge that I can value that. I mean, I used to I do a lot of stuff when I was much younger. I got heavily into powerlifting and bodybuilding. I was deadlifting eight hundred pounds, but squatting eight hundred. Kind of, and it, it it the physical body said hello. Um, the hubcaps are coming off the side. It's time for you to stop. And I kind of just I just dropped it. You know, yeah. it's just it's what it is. So you know, I know what it takes to get into a transformative state. But it's also a lot less than what you realize you think it is. So I can tell you right now, um, what what you're following with Bill Phillips is very powerful, but it's also 20 years ago. And I promise you, I could, give, stuff, yeah. well, I could give you a program that will take you equivalent to 12 minutes a week and just follow the diet and you're done. You're solid. You're good. Well, I, I wanted to pick something. Okay, so I'll tell a little synchronicity. This is how divinely supported I am. And it is mm -hmm. what you focus on expands. So I wasn't focusing on strength training or physical fitness for a while. And I, I did go down the path of hedonist a little, quite too many years, <laughs> I suppose. In other words, I only do things that I love that give me pleasure right. that I enjoy. Right, and right. I didn't really like working out because it's not fun. It hurts. You know, mm. I found out you cannot skip this step in a physical body because I always say I came here for the pizza and the orgasms. You know, <laughs> that's why I came from heaven to earth. And I had a lot of those. But uh, in, in avoiding the um, trying to avoid pain, I have more pain now because I have a knee issue. And so this has slapped me in the face like, oh, and I'm a divine creator. So now I'm choosing to focus on this. And I know with my focus, miracles will happen. So I declared I am taking my health back to the, and I'm wanting to be responsible and pay attention to this beautiful vehicle and give it the movement and uh, that it deserves and needs. 
And I had a friend, I have a friend who just said, you know, uh, and I'm 55. I've been in menopause for five years and that really does affect things with hormones. And I wasn't using any kind of help. And I have a friend who has this Beverly Hills doctor, super expensive. His name's Dr. Uzi. And she is on the wealthy, wealthier side, but she just believes in me and she wants me to live a long time. Like you're saying, is there a lot to do? So she said, I'd love to just pay for you to go to this doctor and just, you know, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And I'm like, really? Like you do that for me? And like, and I just felt so grateful. I had tears of joy coming like, wow, I'm so supported. It's insane. Like my regular doctor through health net is just like a third world country thing. No one cares. It's like, you're not dying. Like have a nice day or let's put you on all these medications for life. No, thank you. No medications. So um, I went to the doctor and I felt a little intimidated. It's like this celebrity doctor, um, you know, in Beverly Hills and it's really expensive, 350 to 450 a consultation. And he had me going out the door with peptides. I'm now like, I'm on two different peptides that you put it, you know, you use a little syringe and syringe, um, like an insulin, insulin syringe. Yeah. yeah. Which is supposed to build mu muscle, help you build muscle and lose fat, a ton of different supplements. Um, I found, and we did blood work. I did my bio, microbiome test. I haven't gotten that back, but I know there's a lot of imbalance there. And um, I did, uh, you know, I'm doing hormone tests and insulin tests is the next one that's coming up. Insulin resistance and cortisol, which causes weight gain in the middle. I have a very Buddha belly. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's so great to know that rich people can have all these. You don't have to just suffer and die and get old. Like there are ways right. to stay young forever. Right. And my friend is doing it. So one of the main things he says is you've got to do weight training, but he's also about very little food. Like only mm -hmm. he said, what are you eating? You know? And I'm like, well, truthfully, I'm not a big, I really resist food prep. I'm just microwave. And a lot of it was comfort food that I was raised on like macaroni and cheese and like filet of fish, frozen foods. He's like, so let me, so you're eating the lowest quality food on the planet. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And he said, no one, he's a little Israeli guy. He's 80 years old with these crazy glasses. He's like, no one in this world is more important than you. And I was just like, whoa. And I felt this like epiphany, like, wow, I, that, that was kind of how I was raised. Like you're not to say my parents didn't do a good job. They did the best they could, but like nobody, you, you, your needs and wants are not that important. You're lucky you're alive. You're just, you know, <laughs> you don't ask, you don't get the top of the line of anything. You know, we had all our clothes from garage sales and everything was secondhand. And I just was raised to not make myself the priority. Neither of my parents exercised. They were just too busy, you know, and self-care, like even a massage. My mother looked at me when I said I got a massage. She's like, she just thought that was so crazy and self-indulgent. I, I, I think of it as a necessity, not a luxury. So when he said that, I was just, it was like, that's absolutely true. You know, I, I'm 55. I have a lot of good years left. Let's go for it. Let's just use all these protocols. So it was really expensive. I mean, it, like the two uh, peptides are like 450 and 550. And I called my friend. I said, it's going to cost like $3,200 for all this stuff. She says, just get it. You're worth it. And I'm just like, whoa. So this is how I get supported. I don't have a full-time job. I do work, you know, I take clients when I need them, but I don't, I, I do have this kind of, this is something that was a fantasy for me. I used to fantasize in the nineties, like, what would it be like to get up whatever time you want? And what would it be like to just do what you, brings you joy? Now I know, like, this is my life. There are, you know, challenges as well, but it, it's been mostly, you know, every day is full of synchronicities, miracles, guiding me here and there. I share a lot on social media because my brand is liveadivinelife.com is that I live a divine life just because I just do what I feel inspired to do. And I have so many exciting things. So this health journey is exciting. Six days a week at the gym. You're saying I could do it in 12 minutes, but I have a feeling yeah. it's going to be a little longer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, anything over 20 minutes evokes a high level of cortisol. And so I can, I've, I've taken people that are elite athletes. I don't care who you are, what you do. It doesn't really matter. I'll give you a kettlebell four minutes a day, three times wow. a week, and that's it. You're done. You're finished. What? And because okay, well, this is how, yeah, yeah. I, and I want to take you through what, what supplements you're taking because you're, you're, you're entering um, the synthetic realm of supplementing what's necessary within your body. And it's understandable because you have high levels of cortisol, high levels of insulin, high levels of estrogen which you're saying is probably in lack of, there was yeah. none whatsoever. So now you're sort of supplementing, but the cortisol, what happens is with, with stress, you have the little pyramid of the endocrine system 
and everything breaks down accordingly into its own little section. And once you have an emotional state, your body will transmute whatever, whatever hormone you need into cortisol to combat the emotional response. And then once that happens, you burn through the cortisol, you burn through the adrenals, then you're completely burnt out. And so all that sort of accumulates and the necessity to supplement. Moreover, I'll give you, I'll give you one, one supplement that you need to take that is right now evident. And I'll tell you after the podcast, but it's like you will take this supplement and it will, it will realize all the other stuff that you have problems with in your body and it will completely equalize it and then replenish one, just one. Wow. And You're so, not going to tell our listeners in case they need it too? Uh, not right now because I don't want to be that I don't want to be that guy but you need you need to realize there's not a it, six days a week is not going to be realized by someone until they completely validate it you you validating it and your realization is you need a functioning body at a hundred percent that works for you you're not looking to become a bodybuilder an athlete or anything of that nature yet the 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 way that it's designed it's designed to fail. So until that realization takes place, and by the way, that's the biggest mistake. So what I was saying was I could take any athlete, a uh, classic example is marathon runner, 26 miles, right? Within four minutes a day, three times a week, not training in the pattern that they're in. So generally speaking, when you train for anything, you must repeat and replicate that system to become better at what you're doing. So if you were a marathon runner, I would need you to run 10 marathons a week to take split off your, your, your best time to reduce the amount of time you take and become more efficient. That's the general premise of, of training, right? For neurology, it's kind of, a, in essence, that's what you're supposed to do is train that same pattern to get better at. When I give someone a four minute, I've taken marathon runners that have X amount of miles, you know, it's like an hour and a half for 26 miles, whatever the time is, and shave literally 20, 30, 40 minutes off their best time using a kettlebell three times a week for four minutes a day. Mm, That's wow. it.